Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hot Mike Show. It's good to see y'all again. Thanks for stopping by. I'm here with my host, Sarah. Today we're going to be reacting Hello. to how, what's the title? What, what it takes, takes to fly the $340 million C-17 Globemaster Three. What is that? A boat? It's a big plane. Oh. Yeah. I believe that's what they use to carry the folks out of Afghanistan with. No. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. These Air Force pilots are oh, there's Air a different Force. There's a different narrative. Globemaster 3 dun, dun, dun. at 26,000 feet in the air. Globemaster. Because it goes all over the globe. Really good. The pilots rendezvous with a KC-10 refueler. What's that? Another boat? That pumps gas down. I mean, it's, a, it's a it's a refueler plane. Wow. Contact. Contact. Eleven hundred gallons a minute. That's crazy. Way to flex with it. Woo woo. Break away. It's one of three missions we saw while embedded with a crew training to fly the C-17. At 174 feet long That's and big. 55 feet tall, yeah. the C-17 has a maximum payload of around 170,000 pounds. It's 300, it's 300 feet. Pounds. So that's more than half of the football field. And shorter than 3,500 uh. feet with just three crew members manning the aircraft. Only three of them on that huge thing? Supporting contingencies, yeah. so the war downrange. A pilot. Look at them. Support COVID missions has been a big thing recently. COVID we missions. We can also do humanitarian missions, so helping uh, evac sick patients, wounded uh, soldiers. Due to its high that payload capacity, C-17s were used in August 2021 to evacuate That's my birthday. people from Afghanistan, Is it? <laughs> with one plane carrying 823 passengers. The basic crew of a C-17, uh, there's three of us. There's a pilot, a co-pilot, and one load master. I swear I know that guy. So my role here as a C-17 Not him. Master Not him. Is you don't know him? To load these aircraft, whether it be helicopters, tanks, Humvees, ambulatory patients. Look at that. Do you see that girl? There's such a big <laughs> The average salary of a C-17 pilot stationed at Travis Air Force Base is around $117,000. Oh, you $17,000. the typical tour is about three years. The guy on the left, I swear I know him. What's up, guy on the left? happens here. At Travis Air Force Base in Fairfield, California. Oh, in Cali. Northeast of San Francisco. Okay. And before pilots complete missions in the sky, they practice the complicated maneuvers in a state of the art simulator. That looks like NASA. Uh, we would you do that? To practice emergencies that you can't yeah. practice you in the jet. You definitely you wouldn't do. Practice in the jet. I don't even uh, know if I could. This isn't a video NASA game, Austin. This is the real like deal. Really poor I know. weather conditions. I don't think you can handle it. Fire number two, engine. Number two. Number two. Students train for emergencies like enemy threats and hydraulic mm. failures. But the first scenario is a simulated engine fire. Could you please uh, scan the number two engine for us? Uh, we're showing engine fire indications. And then uh, I've got the radios. You've engine got the fire. Roger. A lot of crew coordination happens at that time. So that's a good, safe space. Look at her bling. Uh, Look at her nails. First get the feel what's wrong with her nails? What are the, what are the nail regulations in the Air Force? Like you go do it in the oh, they're painted Ready white. Engine, they're red. That is white. They may be different. I, I'm not sure. Just... She shows a pretty ring, though. Yeah. Where's my ring? After practicing in the simulator, Dollar Tree crew meets in the briefing room to plan a live training mission. Uh, so training flight tomorrow. Showtime is a little non-standard. We're gonna do 6:30 local showtime at base ops. Pilots and crew spend you know, hours think people have the day masks before on. a mission discussing the route. They're the probably all vaccinated. Plans if anything goes wrong. I'm just saying. So if we're in a failure to disconnect position, the main thing is just maintain a good stable platform. Keep doing what you're doing if you're pilot flying. The crew finalized. Look at their, their jumpsuits. Is that like a full body suit or is that a pants and a shirt? The flight suit. It's a full full I guess suit. A jump one, suit. One piece. Precisely at 1000, the crew boarded the plane and ran through their final checklists. Dun, dun, dun. The first exercise of the training mission. I've been there. Refueling in How do you even know that? So Klamath refueling Falls. is basically thinking about a gas station in the sky. Uh, a gas station there, they in they the sky? Aircraft meeting at the same point Like, in that's space. scary. So it can be um, potentially sensitive that's cool, cargo you're carrying and you don't want to stop. Um, like, or perhaps they're just not a good place to land or maybe you don't have the time to land. Like, how you know, fast? Does that go in the air like that? I mean, you guys 1100 gallons a minute. 
so it'll be about a thousand feet below. No, no, no. How crash. fast are they and going? Three hundred miles an hour. Altitude gap to where? Wow. Uh, that's the long pull. That's six hundred feet. Listen. To actually, pass the gas from their aircraft to ours. Sorry. Up, yeah. Contact with their boom. I think we got big throttle inputs yeah. in, the, in the backing up. So you just have to now. Imagine if you just missed the hole. That gas tank was like. <laughs> <laughs> happened to me multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> a good saying is uh, that gas tank would go everywhere. When we're air refueling. We're focusing on very small details and trying to see like small movements because small movements that close can make a big impact. Refueling happens while pilots maneuver the C-17 at 300 miles per hour, nearly 30,000 feet in the sky. You didn't know that. See, now they said it. For me. I was thinking about improving uh, my power movements. So my uh, my stick movements, so my right hand, I was sitting in the right seat, were pretty solid, but like my, my throttle movements could have been a lot better. Throttle. So it's something that I can work on in the future. Break away, break away, break away. Break away. Isn't that a song? Phase two of the mission no, involves low I've been there too. flying. So low level flying during the day, we can go as low as 300 feet above the ground, which is pretty low for a large that aircraft. That is very um, low. And the intent there is to How do you stay even know below that? the radar picture of a potential adversary. Us. So when Are you're you a lower, pilot? there's a few tactical benefits that we have Basically. that help us get to a... It's so crazy. So on this big plane, manner. there's only three people on there? Yeah. You can't hold any more than three people. That's such a lie. <laughs> Out there flying it, we're... we're uh, Watching our altitudes and making sure that like what would happen though if someone went down? Like, like you'd that. need a backup. Also, another pilot in the back uh, looking at the like what happens if someone like calling out different towers. It, it don't just blow up in midair. You got. Time. I'm not that's saying that. I'm saying what if someone like didn't feel good or like passed out or. That's why there's three of them. The C-17 headed north <laughs> towards Moses Lake, Washington, to practice landing in an assault zone. Assault. An assault zone is that's a short cool. runway. Typically, they're about 3,500 feet, and then it has a marked zone that's 500 feet uh, long. And our goal is to put our aircraft in the 500-foot box, and then use max effort to stop on the remaining uh, runway. Oh, that's cool, right there. Crews have to master landing on a traditional airstrip as well as temporary runways. So the tactical part of the C-17 is it goes to fields that uh, maybe insane. have short runways or yeah, dirt is. runways. And oftentimes I can believe that's $340 million. Pull back up on the stick and little and little they only make 117 gigs. <laughs> I need, you guys need a raise. They need a raise. I agree. But when you're in the military, like you basically don't have time to spend your money. You're just always working. The final mission, a combat offload back at the Travis Air Force. I feel like this has been a big, like a long, like they started at 10 and now they're finishing it. An expedited offload. Typically if we're in a um, situation in which we don't have... Now where did he come from? He's not, he wasn't part of the crew, was he? I don't think he was in the three of them. Actually, I have no idea. Well to the pilots and then... They will hit the throttles, release the brakes, and the Maybe he was the refuel guy. The we'll call load clear, close up, and then we'll get out of here. Overall, it was a great sortie for everyone. It was very busy and very long, so it's always tough to go fly for six hours and constantly be engaged. Do but they I get think food? Performed really well. I think no, they don't eat people ever. People relate cargo jets to. Like do they get the water? Airliner. But what we do, I think, is very different. Probably. Specifically, we go anywhere and everywhere in the world. Sometimes that means you have lots of information on that airfield. They probably Sometimes have lunch in there. None. And so, like I said, you have to be a problem solver. Oh, someone at Starbucks. Look at that. Toes. So it's really rewarding when you go pick up, um, you know, 150 guys who have been deployed for six months, and you get to bring Aww, them to their families. Oh, that is really nice. Yeah, that is pretty cool. She got together. Yeah, that's crazy, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in with us today. On what it takes to fly the 340 million C yes. 17 Globe Master Three. Hope Ooh. you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next video. Austin and Sarah signing out.